Okay, for the past week or so, I've been heavily focused on certain video games, one of them being Path of Exile 2. Anyone interested in the game is probably already aware, a lot of creators have been posting about it, but Grinding Gear Games decided to hold an event and brought a bunch of people out to Los Angeles, allowing them to play a functional build of the game, and I'm happy to say that I was one of those people. I wasn't able to get the video out immediately after my return home, which doesn't actually bother me. A lot of the people in attendance have their entire career based solely on Path of Exile, so I think it's actually kind of fair that I waited a bit here to give my thoughts. But, with that said, I've certainly got plenty to say about it, and I gathered the entire USB drive that they gave us full of footage recorded by me from my gameplay from three different classes, tons of different skills, etc. Which means I've also got plenty to show you. I also got to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with Jonathan Rogers, one of the GGG founders, so I'm still figuring out what to do with that footage, which they also gave me via email. So all in all, it was a pretty fantastic event, and I'm thrilled I got invited to it. I'll start with the biggest things first as I do my best to evaluate this title. Path of Exile 2 is a radically different experience compared to Path of Exile 1. I like it, I think others will probably like it too, but I have to be clear about how I say this because it is tremendously different in terms of combat pacing, functionality, and even core elements of movement. The biggest singular mechanical change from my perspective is allowing WASD for movement instead of your mouse. That change opens up a lot of different combat and skill functionalities, but the basic premise is that you can move now if you want to with WASD and avoid the static firing positions for ranged classes that used to exist in PoE 1. I'll go much more in depth on the secondary effects of all this later on, but for right now, that change is amazingly comfortable with in particular ranged classes. Opening up the ability to strafe while firing immediately feels like night and day once you try it, and I can't really picture anyone wanting to go back to the mouse click movement system after experiencing this, like I just don't see anyone really wanting to do that, even if it's technically still an option, which I do think is great that they included that option for anyone who might want to try it. However, for Melee, which I played at least an hour and a half of, I actually opted to stay with mouse click movement instead of WASD because for some reason it made me feel more in control. That's a little bit hard to say and have people understand what I mean by it, but it genuinely made me feel more in control when using a melee character. You can block now, which is cool, and it's directional based, but WASD movement and strafing with melee led me to very often throw out my skills, I guess, in the slight wrong direction, which matters a lot more when those skills have long animations and smaller hitboxes, which is true for the melee characters, I guess. Melee was difficult, right? And I say that with emphasis on the word. I don't know if it will be precisely the same on full release or if it was tuned like this to stop us all from progressing so quickly, not sure, but melee was incredibly hard compared to the ranged classes and options. It was funny actually because all of the people around me who were there accelerated through as much content as possible as quickly as they could and they were picking ranger and basically everyone else had a tremendously different experience if they didn't pick ranger. Strafing is still valuable as a melee character, probably, if you want to do it, but the additional level of comfort control that mouse movement allowed me to have just felt better than WASD. And when combined with the new pacing, it made me feel more comfortable responding to attacks that had wider hitboxes especially. Why? Because the game now has dodge rolling, which is an integral part of the combat experience. Dodge rolling feels good, it's well designed, well developed, but what's far more interesting than the dodge roll itself is what it does to the function of boss combat. PoE 2 is way more gameplay oriented. It's not a loot farming simulator. I mean, I mean, it is obviously, but not like it used to be. It's an actual game with loot and the function of dodge rolling means you can create much different boss patterns and attack styles and mechanically interesting encounters compared to what you're stuck with when it isn't available to you as part of your mechanical pool. I'm happy to say they have utilized all or at least nearly all of that potential for boss battles and you actually have to think when fighting things now, even some of the trash mobs, even early on in the game. PoE 1 has endgame, which requires similar levels of thought and strategy. It, it does, eventually. But before you get to anything that requires that actual strategy, you play the game for like 200 hours. That's a slight exaggeration in some respects, but in others, not so much. PoE 2, you will be encountering things that force you to strategize, focus, mechanically speaking, and improve your own dexterity and tactics before you even get past like Act 1 and 2. It's actually very hard not to compare this to Path of Exile 1. I'm doing it constantly right now myself, but I would urge everyone where possible to view this as an entirely separate creature. PoE 2 is its own standalone experience, and there are certainly similarities, of course, but a lot of the core things that persisted in Path of Exile originally for years are now different. Example, when you get skill gems, you basically morph them into whatever skill you want from the current available selection to you. 
This is a better system, really. It just is in terms of pacing and certainly helps with a bit of the arbitrary grind component and the ease of specializing where and how you want to. But it also changes the system dramatically and is a pretty big departure from what PoE 1 has given us up till now. I enjoy the changes, I really do, and I think it's better to have the support gems linked in sequence on top of the skill gem itself, which they are now, thereby removing gear sockets and link requirements entirely, but that's a big change and kind of shakes up the norm in a way that players might not like or might not be used to. Again, I do like it, and I think most will like it eventually, but the differences here between those two games are pretty substantial. Rapid fire on this part. Art style? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Love it. Great visuals and really nice detail. Sound design is also really fantastic, um, a particular part that stood out to me on an individual level. Punchy effects, satisfying audio feedback, etc. And those two things combined give really good atmosphere, generally, to the game. See, increasing the level of mechanically intensive encounters, which is like the cornerstone of what PoE2 does, means the player will actually perceive these things in a much more intense way. Example, if you just immediately kill everything on the entire screen, which you do in Path of Exile 1 most of the time, you aren't paying attention, or not usually paying attention. You have to pay attention rarely, but the norm is autopilot, right? Like mindlessly clicking around, watching a video on your other monitor, whatever you're doing. In PoE2, you have to gauge what you want to do and where because you absolutely can get killed by normal mobs. You can get surrounded and trapped. You can end up dying to things that seem relatively harmless. And this means you have to focus a lot more. Of course, when you get geared and get the right gem compositions with greater game knowledge, that'll probably happen a lot less. But I think it's clear that their goal is to make it a consistent possibility regardless. That level of required focus felt good, at least to me, and also made me more engaged with basically every other gameplay element involved. But the added side effect here is that sounds and artistic choices are much closer to the forefront of the experience if you're actually looking at the monitor and paying attention rather than watching a video on another screen or listening to music or something like that. And PoE 2 excels because of it. PoE 1 always had decent sound design, such as Herald of Ice and the crit explosion being a really satisfying pop in the combat experience. That's just one example. But PoE 2 has you more engaged on every single visceral level, including combat, which makes it feel noticeably better, in my opinion. Loot is actually dialed down. At least, that's how it felt to me. I'm sure that changes in Endgame, obviously, but there's a lot less quantity in my experience, and the fact that crafting has been so monumentally changed by the removal of gear sockets makes it so that the loot you find early on, at least, is much more exciting. Of course, that will be dramatically different in Endgame, but if they can manage to preserve the atmosphere of this drop I just got actually matters, it could be good, I'm excited to check it for as long as possible, that's a good thing. It may shift eventually into, oh look, another giant explosion of loot, but none of it matters with 99% certainty, so I'm not really excited. But the longer it takes before that shift occurs, the better. World immersion and storytelling feels superior, kind of shifting gears here. I don't play games like this for the lore, I play for the loot and the gameplay. I just, I've never really cared about that stuff in practically any game, but it's always a benefit, like 100% of the time it is always a benefit when world building and storytelling are good and well executed, which seems to be the case here. Some interesting quests, some really good dialogue, good voice acting, and it really does feel like an intentional, well-crafted experience that's been considered from top to bottom instead of something where, you know, the focus was on one particular area and everything else languished without the attention it deserves. Like everything got good attention in this game and it's very obvious. Now, for one thing I actually thought was kind of terrible, you need to go back to town in order to recharge flasks. In the moment, during my actual gameplay while I was there, I think the whole min-max metagamer mindset kicked in, so I started to just do it on muscle memory alone, throwing portals down and rapidly clicking in and out to get back to where I was with more flasks, you know, after recharging. But thinking about it now, it's not good. It actually disrupts things a lot because they give you a free perpetual town portal button, which takes a couple seconds to execute, which I like, again, simplifying the loot system by removing some of what is now considered spam drops that you don't really care about. But having to do that animation and teleport to and from the battlefield out of combat whenever you want more flask charges every single time, it feels bad. It's doable, and I wouldn't consider it a deal breaker of any kind, but I hope they find a way to supplement flask charges out in the world in a way that feels more omnipresent and comfortable and, and really just available to you instead of having the experience peppered with portal town, charge at the well, portal, fight again, over and over and over again. 
That's the thing, though. Combat flow and combat pacing are just two entirely separate worlds here from Path of Exile 1 to 2. You can actually stun enemies and stagger them now. This presents an opportunity and is even present in boss fights as well, which probably comes into play a lot more later down the line with melee in particular. But you also can't cheese the boss fights as much. Dying resets them, and dying even resets enemies in the broader portions of the map, which means if you encounter a zone that's difficult for whatever reason, maybe a specific enemy archetype or a mechanical problem, you have to actually re-clear it if you die. And you lose any loot that was on the ground from what I saw, which I do not like, by the way. I hope they make loot drops persistent through deaths, unless I somehow misunderstood that function. Thankfully, they have a checkpoint system now. Make it to the end, grab the checkpoint, retry from right before the boss fight or whatever it is if you need to, which is 100% necessary, so it's a really good thing that it's there. But this, once again, is a very big departure from what used to be true with Path of Exile 1, where you jump back in after deaths happen with very little disruption or change. I like this better, mind you, which is again true for most of the changes that they've opted to make here, but it is a change, right? On the basic level, it's a difference between games, and it might not be preferred by everyone. Bottom line, Path of Exile 2 is a transformation of the core experience. It's a standalone product with a lot of differences. Less loot, less unnecessary drops, that is more reliable customization, and slower combat pacing in particular. With that combat comes increased difficulty, relatively speaking, increased character control, and better granularity of player strategy. It's not press one button and clear the entire map anymore, and maybe it can get that way, but I highly doubt it'll be the typical endgame norm. So, at least from what I experienced, it's much more action combat strategy based. Alongside all this, there is a greater emphasis on action-oriented reflexive gameplay, right? you reacting to things that happen instead of you just raffle stomping the entire map all the time. There's a checkpoint system, wonderful and frequently intense bosses, that's a real highlight, as well as quality art style, sound design, and world building. I will absolutely be playing at launch, and I feel that this game actually captures the idea of picking a class whose play style you identify with and therefore having a much better experience for yourself um, quite a bit more than it did before in the original, which has me pretty excited. Again, there's more I can say and probably will say in the coming weeks and months, more footage I have as well, and some info from the interview I want to parse through before uploading, but for today, that's it. I like it, it needs polish, of course, and some balancing tweaks for sure, but the experience is top-notch and it made me want to play more. That's it. If you want to support the channel, check out the links down below. Limited run merchandise, spring collection is going away soon, Patreon and Locals, other links as well, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. Thank you to GGG for inviting me, and have a nice night.